Well, hello again and welcome to Word for the Week, our online book study here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Jeremy Heikem and I'm so glad to be with you uh, as we are looking at uh, this book, uh, The Prayer of Agar by J. Payleitner. Uh, we are in chapter two uh, today, which he has titled Utterance from a Collector. Um, on the very first page there, he has printed uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verses 1 through 3. I want to read that for you. It says, uh, The sayings of Agar, son of Jaqet, an inspired utterance. This man's utterance to Ithiel. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained the knowledge of the Holy One. As we read this, um, it might seem confusing. You know, what does he mean by uh, an, un, an inspired utterance? Um, I think we can suggest that um, obviously Agar must have been um, uh, sitting uh, in conversation with the Lord um, and he, at the very least felt an inspiration from the Lord about writing this. Um, he makes a pretty interesting statement that our, our author, uh, J. Payleitner um, uh, suggests, which is he kind of speaks in a not so attractive way about himself. He says um, he's weary. He is uh, a brute, not necessarily a man. He hasn't learned wisdom. He, he needs to know more. Um, what does he maybe mean by brute? I think he just means that when he compares himself to God, and when he compares himself to other godly people, he recognizes in himself a sort of a state of not being equal. Um, he he recognizes he needs to be be more, be better. I think that's something that is difficult sometimes for us. We we sort of want I think we sort of want sometimes to to think that we're good at being a Christian, that we're good at following. God and, uh, and, and living a Christ-centered life, the reality is we're probably not. Um, we're probably not nearly as good as we think we are anyways. Um, and it, this life is difficult. And so what that sort of pushes us towards is the idea of being weary. You know, at some point it's like, man, I keep going through this. I keep trying. I keep trying. I keep trying. I don't seem to get anywhere. Um, you could eventually become, I suppose, even depressed about trying to walk through this life. If, of course, we didn't understand the concept of grace, we didn't understand the concept of God's mercy for us. And so while it can feel overwhelming, we can get weary, we can get tired, we can get worn out, God still gives us more grace. He gives us more grace, more mercy, more love, so that we have the ability to get through this. Um, towards the end of the this sort of short chapter, um, J. Payleitner writes this. He says, Agar is the refreshing opposite of those slick, vainglorious preachers who claim to have all the answers to every question. Personally, I prefer to listen to a Bible teacher who acknowledges his need for a savior. Someone who tells self-deprecating stories and admits he has not learned wisdom. Agar even admits he is brutish or beastly, almost subhuman. Until he meets God face to face, Agar concedes that he has not attained the knowledge of the Holy One. The takeaway from the first three verses written by Agar might be that human wisdom is faulty. Even those who are carefully religious or identified as being with God should admit they are starving for answers. So that led me to this question for us all today. Um, if we are indeed starving for answers, if we are um, sort of starving for conversation with God, conversation with others about God, uh, conversation as we read God's word, we sit under God's word, um, then that leads me to sort of a question about what does it mean? What does it mean to actually sit under God's word? What does it mean to actually study God's word uh, to go in and sort of search out those questions that we might have? I want to give you four um four realities, I guess, uh, about um, studying God's Word that I, I'd love to have you write down and think about over this week. Four um, very important considerations. The first one is this. When it comes to studying God's Word, we should always ask ourselves, am I reading with an intentional purpose? 
Am I reading with an intentional purpose to understand and apply God's word in my life? So when I go to read God's word, am I doing this out of a sense of obligation? Am I doing this because, um, you know, I hope that God will uh, sort of look down and smile on me because he sees me reading his reading the Bible? Um, or do I go there with some sort of intentional purpose of uh, learning more, discerning better who our God is, what he has done for us? Um, do I go there with an intentional purpose of maybe answering a question that I have? Or, or at least beginning a conversation with God about a question. Uh, do I go to his word to get deeper into conversation with him? So, so the sort of first thing as we study God's word is we really should ask ourselves, what's my purpose as I'm doing this today? What, what is, do I hope to learn something? If I do, what do I intend to learn? Um, what, is our, what is our intentional purpose to both understand and then rightly to apply that to our lives? Sort of a second thing that we should probably consider, or we should definitely consider, as we go before God and as we are um, in his word together, um, we need to actually sit under that word. So when we come to the word initially, we might come uh, with a purpose. Uh, let's say, hypothetically, that our, our purpose is to answer uh, a question about um, God's provision, Okay. And so uh, as, we, as we have this question about how God provides for us, uh, we, we sort of led to Psalm 23. And we recognize that he leads us uh, by still waters. He, he restores our soul. He fills our cup to overflowing. Um, he gives us goodness and mercy. Okay, so we've read that. We, we went looking for an answer to our question. We've read Psalm 23. Now what do we do? We sit under it. And, and what does it mean to sit under the word? Um, I actually had a Bible teacher one time tell me that um, to think of sitting under the word this way, that you've read, you've read the, the, the Bible and pretend this book is the Bible for a second, but you've read, you've read what you're going to read, right? Now, now take the Bible and just put it like this on your head, right? Pretend that you could walk around with the Bible like this on your head all day long. Now, the idea isn't that somehow by osmosis, God's word is going to filter into your brain by walking around with the Bible on your head all day long. His point was this. You'll be reminded constantly, right, that God's word is before you, that it's above you. And so as you've read something, you put that thing over you, you sit under it, and you let it make this impact on your life. Um, you let it uh, inform how you make decisions. It, it, you let it inform what you say, uh, what you think, uh, what you do. And uh, by, by sort of thinking of the Bible placed on top of your head like this, you can't forget it, right? You're not going to forget if you're walking around with a book uh, open on the top of your head. And you're not going to forget God's word. And so we, we sit under it. We let it sort of uh, seep into all that we are doing. Another word that's been used here uh, is the idea of rumination or ruminate, to ruminate on God's word. Ruminate literally is sort of a, a, an idea. It means to chew on. Um, and so if you think about like a, a cow and how it will put grass in its mouth and it'll just chew, 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 chew. Um, you know, the purpose of cows ruminating on grass, chewing grass, isn't because the grass necessarily has a lot of nutritional value for, for them. But what the, the chewing process does, because they have like these four chambers of their stomach and their food is uh, digested so much differently than ours, um, that chewing process actually is, the di is, is helping them to digest the food uh, of the grain uh, or, or, you know, whatever they, the corn, whatever they've already eaten. So... Um, the idea of ruminating, chewing on it, getting the all of the maximum nutritional value out of what has come into us. Uh, so we need to read with an intentional purpose to understand and apply, but we also have to go with a purpose to sit under it, to let it ruminate over us, let it sort of seep into our lives. The third thing that I would suggest we do when we study God's word, when we're going looking for answers, when we're going looking for deeper conversation, is that we would ask questions um, and ask them with a, an intentional purpose again to, to gain clarity. Uh, not so much to criticize, not so much to doubt, but to gain clarity. Ask good questions of God. So as you're reading through his word and you come across something and you know, I don't even begin to understand that. And that's a great time to sort of just stop right there and go to God and say, okay, 
here I am in your word and I've come across this thing and I'm, I'm having some difficulty understanding it. Can you help me to understand it? Now, that doesn't mean he's going to necessarily just speak to you something immediate in that moment and all of a sudden go, oh, great, thanks. Maybe that is what will happen. He may lead you to another brother or sister who can can give you clarity on that. He may lead you to a book. He may lead you to another place in scripture. You know, we often say that scripture ought to interpret scripture, right? Uh, he may lead you to another place in the Bible for an answer. Um, but let him lead you. Go with a question and let him lead you to that place. Um, so when you come across things you don't quite understand, it's okay. Then then ask God to help you find the answer. The fourth thing that I would say when we come to study the Word of God is that we can't forget the action part of it, right? At the beginning, we said we come with a purpose to carefully understand and apply it. Well, that application, right, is the is the is the action. So living it out in our daily lives. Um, so once I've come with my intentional purpose to really know and understand who God is uh, better, and then I have let it sort of sit over me, and I have let it ruminate down onto me. Um, I've asked any questions that I might have about what I've read. Now I'm, I, I, I am spurred on by the Holy Spirit to go and live that thing out in my life. So come with intentional purpose, sit under it, ask questions, and act. Um, I think that is critical for us because otherwise I think we will be in that same place as Agar. We'll just sort of feel weary. We'll feel, feel like we have no value. We'll feel like our life has no value. Why are we doing what we're doing? Um, let's be intentional and purposeful as we come together and study God's word. Now, next starting next week, we're going to get into these sort of questions that, uh, that Agar asks. Um, and he has a, a list of questions. Um, Pay Leitner reminds us that Agar's name really literally means collector. And he was kind of a collector of lists and questions. And, uh, and so now he's going to ask some of these questions of God. Um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how those questions apply to your life as well. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, I look forward to being with you again next week. Uh, we'll be in chapter three. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon.